Now we are ready to take uh, questions from the audience. I hope the microphones are ready. Uh, we have questions here in the front row. This is hand is up for a while, then we'll first here and then there. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Zaki Lighty. I'm a special advisor to the High Representative of the European Union. Uh, I, I do believe that it's quite naive to think uh, that China will never use force. Uh, because they are uh, from a merchant uh, uh, tradition. Apart from that, I wanted to hear from our Asian um, colleagues their uh, reading on the 7 October uh, decision taken by uh, the United States, which we regard in Europe as an extremely, extremely, extremely important declaration yeah. with huge implications. Yeah. First, because the impact is wide. Fundamentally, the United States is trying to replicate the Huawei model to the whole semiconductor industry. It had been done largely on a unilateral basis. And the, the point in common that we have with the Chinese with the, the Japanese, sorry, is that one of the firm is like our uh, Dutch firm, ASML, uh, largely concerned by the uh, decision. So uh, I didn't read um, precise assessment on this. So I would be really uh, happy to hear about the assessment you made, I mean, in all three countries, on this decision, which in my view uh, is one of the most fundamental decision taken by the administration on the line of the Trump administration. Thank you. Thank you for that question um, about the Tom Friedman's declaration of war. We have a question here and then one across the room. Uh, oui, uh, deux, uh, une question. Curieusement, on n'a pas parlé de Hong Kong. Est-ce que la cause de Hong Kong est totalement oubliée Est-ce que la messe est complètement dite Ça, c'est ma première question pour Jean-Pierre Cavestan. La deuxième est peut-être plus une remarque, peut-être pour notre ami chinois. Euh, la Chine est confrontée à un recul euh, économique majeur. Parce que je prends l'hypothèse que 4% de croissance en Chine... C'est l'équivalent de la croissance zéro pour nous à peu près. Est-ce qu'il n'y a pas quand même un risque que, face à cet presque échec économique, il n'y ait une montée en puissance d'un discours nationaliste Et comme l'a dit notre ami indien, il n'est pas du tout sûr que Xi Jinping soit aussi rationnel que nous ne le pensons. One more question. End of the row. Alors, sans remettre en cause la justesse du, euh, du sujet, en l'occurrence la rivalité euh, sino-américaine, vous me permettrez de, de me poser en votre présence des, des questions. Euh, en fait, le sujet essentiel est aussi les nouveaux mondes qui viennent. Réduire l'intégralité de la dynamique des changements actuels à la seule rivalité sino-américaine est, est, à mon sens, euh, d'abord frustrante pour tout le reste. Cela veut dire que dans l'inconscient des gens qui l'abordent, le monde qui vient va toujours un monde de rivalité et de domination. Donc très sympathique pour l'intégralité des autres pays. Mais au-delà de cette euh, problématique, quand on s'intéresse de très près aux grands acteurs, d'abord l'acteur américain, il emporte avec lui son monde, sa vision, sa philosophie, son espace financier. Il a évolué, il se pose des questions, il essaye de rebâtir d'autres alliances, il projette. Donc c'est déjà un monde. C'est un système monde, le G7. En face, les Chinois sont loin d'être inintelligents. Eux-mêmes ne réduisent pas leur évolution à la seule rivalité sino-américaine. Eux se posent la question si face à un système monde, ils peuvent à eux tout seuls prétendre le remettre en question. 
Et que font-ils Ils essayent de structurer un nouveau monde. Quand on s'intéresse à la roue de la soie, la réduire à une seule dimension commerciale, c'est méconnaître totalement la pensée politique des uns et des autres. Ils savent, et ils ne sont pas les seuls, que face à un monde, essayer de triompher ou de faire basculer, il faut un autre monde. D'où d'ailleurs les instruments des uns et des autres qui s'appellent embargo, qui s'appellent contenir. Qui ça. Et à mon sens, s'intéresser au monde qui vient, aux stratégies développées par les uns et les autres pour mieux comprendre les évolutions qui viennent et quelles sont les stratégies des acteurs serait certainement plus opportun. Je vous remercie. Well, we have um, three questions, which uh, the October 7 decision, which is very Trumpist-like from the Biden administration to constrain China's future high science, high tech uh, growth. Is China getting weaker or is China going to dictate the order, world order? Last weekend, there was a conference in Washington where the Secretary of State Blinken spoke, and he said that China is now so strong, we have to worry they're going to try to take over Taiwan. And a few hours later, his deputy spoke and said, China is so weak now, we have to worry they may want to come and uh, take over Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, we've got full circularity in our thinking about how to deal with it. Our questions give uh, the panel a chance to, to respond. Do any of you want to speak? And, and GC, uh, there was a direct question directed to you as well. Would you like to go first? Oh, well, uh... Yes, but I don't speak, I uh, don't understand French, oh, so and uh, so I didn't get the uh, questions to me. Absolutely. Anyway, I would intervene by saying, first of all, there's a great deal of concern in China uh, when you compare Ukraine with Taiwan. Uh, to all the Chinese, Taiwan is part of China. Uh, Ukraine is a sovereign state. So whatever we do to Taiwan is our domestic affairs. Whatever we do is the legal and the legitimate. Uh, so that's why uh, we don't take Taiwan and uh, Ukraine together. This, of course, this is your official position and also the public sentiment. That makes some sense. The, the problem is, uh, of course, most people in people in most countries in the United States recognize one China and Taiwan is part of China. There's a great distinction between U.S. position and U.S. Chinese position on this issue. That is, the United States says it has a one China policy, and we say we have a one China principle. The difference is whether Taiwan is part of China. The U.S. one China policy says the United States only recognize the PRC as the representative of China, and uh, there's only one China. But what is Taiwan? It doesn't say. It, it is it's some, sometimes very ambiguous about this. But uh, another problem we have to worry about is that there is a very strong military commitment made by the United States in defending Taiwan. And the United States does, does not and did not make such a an commitment to Ukraine. That is uh, also an, a very uh, meaningful difference. Thank you, Jisa. I think you also touched in your earlier remarks on the difficulties of overcoming COVID, Omicron challenges inside China and the uh, challenges to the Chinese economy's growth in the current period, which I think partly addresses the question that was addressed to you. Now to the October 7 and other issues, please, panel. Give it. May I? Yes. Uh, well, relating to uh, realignment of supply chain in the region, I think that the many Japanese business companies are now thinking about several important factors. Number one, Chinese population is shrinking, while the United States and India population are expanding. This is a new trend. The other thing is that the politics in, domestic politics in China becomes much more unpredictable than before. This is number two. Number three is that there are some geoeconomic risks in the United States, not in, just in China. It means that as long as the United States government or the Congress in, in, is introducing more legal actions to try to decouple the area, I mean, 
that, that's why Japanese business companies need to consider these new risks to export goods to the United States. Because of this, I think that the Japanese business companies, more and more Japanese business companies are now diversifying the direction of Japanese investments in other countries, particularly in Indonesia and India, together with other countries. So this is a new trend. E even though China remains really important Japanese trading partner, but well, uh, relatively speaking, I think that the Japanese business company are now diversifying its trading strategy, unlike before, considering American reaction to American decoupling policy, which introduced more legal actions to try to decouple the two economic blocks. So can, can yes, I just very quickly respond to your question? I think it's an important question that you asked. Um, if you were to remove Xi Jinping era, and go back, say, 10 years, you would find much of India's anxiety centered around American control of critical sectors that could be inimical to our growth in the future. And it's a fact, whether it's the control of the ICANN, whether it's control of some of the key electronic and energy supplies, that was true. Today, because of the behavior of Xi Jinping, uh, there might be a tendency for some to see this as a good political uh, choice to make and perhaps uh, see the US as the lesser of the problem vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, what China offers today. But for a country of our size, where, uh, you know, where I'm sitting, I think uh, we will have to diversify and we will have to build some of our own capabilities alongside. So I think for us, uh, having anyone control the single most important vital ingredient for our economic growth and having only one source uh, uh, as, as an option is, is not very comfortable. Like I said, go back 10 years and Indian anxiety would be about best in control of key uh, inputs. Uh, come, come in, you know, Xi Jinping comes in and suddenly we start seeing uh, the world in a different way. But uh, on a longer term, uh, I agree with the Japanese colleague, diversification, investments into multiple different geographies and building certain critical capabilities for countries that have size and scale is, is vital. So I think uh, US, uh, Korean companies are very mindful of the US sanctions, and especially the, the October 7th is a sweeping ban on advanced chip sale to China. Definitely, Korea will abide by US sanctions and relevant uh, laws and regulations. However, in view of the fact that China is the largest market of the world, Korean companies will not give it up. Therefore, Korean companies from now on will be in China, but only just for China. They will not use China as a hub for exporting to certain yeah, okay. third countries. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of our time, and we are the last. Uh, Jean-Pierre, on, on Hong Kong, which I thought was a very you On Hong Kong? Oh, very, yeah, very, 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 quickly, very briefly. Uh, I would say from a political point of view, it's game over. I don't think there is any meaningful political life in Hong Kong anymore. So uh, I think it's uh, the Communist Party and its uh, local representatives, the so-called uh, Hong Kong patriots, uh, who are running the place. Now, it doesn't mean that Hong Kong is totally aligned to China in terms of public freedoms. We still have a free access to internet. We, I think we still enjoy more academic freedom than in mainland China, uh, but, but, but uh, it's part of China and, and it's, uh, I think, um, and the Communist Party is very, really much in a, in a, in a, in a driving seat. Uh, in Hong Kong now. So. Well, well, thank you. And thank you, audience, for staying with us. Please join me in thanking our panel for their uh, observations. <laughs>